your question Rukmini's question Lord Chaitanya's opulence there are six kinds of opulences richness then fame strength influence beauty education and renunciation so he exhibited all these six it was very beautiful therefore his name is gaur sundar very beautiful tall and stout and strong there was no comparison of his beauty at that time he was so beautiful fair complexion this time he did not appear in black or complexion because people after fair complex so and son of a very respectable brahmin family and very highly educated he is scholarly uh manifestation he will find in the explanation of one verse atma ramascha munayo nirgantha api urukrame kurvanti ahituki bhukti ittam bhuta gnohari this verse was twice explained two times explained once before sanatan goshami and once before <coughs> sarvabhouma bhattacharya sarvabhouma bhattacharya was considered at that time to be the greatest learned man in india at that time nashastra logic among the learned scholar logic is the greatest weapon to get victory over his opponent say so learned A scholar is always a very learned scholar in logic, nashastra. So this logic was taught in uh, Bihar, Darbhanga. India, in different parts of India, different kinds of education was imparted. in benaras the mayavad philosophy was very prominent in darbhanga logic was very prominent in navadvip philosophy was very prominent and nay also similarly in barampur bhatpara there are many places just like at the present moment there are many places university so he was great logician chaitanya in his boyhood he would ask his contemporary friends to argue with him on a subject matter and he will defeat him and again he will establish it the very point on which he defeated his friend he will again establish it and again nullified your soul and talent his name was there for another name was nimai pandit one name is gaur sundar Another name is Nimai Pandit. 
Pandit means very learned scholar. <coughs> and that is not here say that because we are devotees, we are speaking of Lord Chaitanya, very learned scholar. The evidence is there in the explanation of Atma Rama Sloka. He has explained that sloka in sixty-four different ways. One verse. He has described one word, Atmaram, in eleven ways. Similarly, Munaya, Nirdantha, Urukram, Bhakti, each word he has uh, enunciated in so many ways. So he, he showed his opulence in wisdom also, just like. Krishna <coughs> showed his opulence by speaking Bhagavad Gita in wisdom. Not only miracles. Uh, miracles a, a magician can also show. That is not a very important thing. A yogi also can show so many miracles. But scholarly presentation uh, of a certain thing, that requires uplands. Uh, and the most wonderful uplands is all, that is <clears throat> very unique, especially in this age, that at the age of twenty-four years he renounced the world. He had his very beautiful and obedient wife, Lakshmi Devi, sixteen years old. She was by name Lakshmi, and actually she was goddess of fortune. And his mother was so affectionate, there is no comparison. So in a home where mother is affectionate, mother is present, and very beloved wife is present, and at the very young age, he was twenty-four years old, and his wife was sixteen years old, materially that is the age for sense gratification, but he renounced. He didn't care for his wife, didn't care for his mother. So renunciation is also one of the opulences. And it is described in the Simad Bhagavatam about his renunciation. Taja means give up. And do means difficult, difficult. And su means very difficult. In any word, if you apply, affix the word su it becomes hundred times more magnified. Just like buddhi, buddhi is intelligence, and if you affix su-buddhi, that means very, very intelligent. Similarly, dustaja, difficult to give up, and when you affix this alphabet, so it becomes very, very, very difficult. So sudustaja, this word has been used. Takva sudustaja surev sito rajalakhim. Rajalakhim means very happy home, home life, homely life. That is called rajalakhim. One who is very happy at home 
and the uh, symptom of happiness at home, according to Vedic uh, understanding, is the mother, wife, and son. If one has got very good mother, one has got very good wife, and one has got very good son, then his homely life is heaven. That is the standard of happiness. So he was a young man, and although he had a wife, uh, he knew that he would give up, that he did not begot children. So his children were his devotees. Vrindavanda Thakur has worshipped him. Sa putraya, sa kalutraya. My dear Lord, I offer my obeisances unto you, along with your <coughs> sons. So Vrindavanda Thakur is offering obeisances, Lord Chaitanya, and specifically mentioning with your sons. Where are the sons? He did not beget any children. So his sons means his devotees, his followers. <coughs> Kalatra means wife. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had all these facilities. He was learned, very honored young man in his country. He had many followings. In one incident we can understand how beloved leader he was. The Kaji challenged his Sankirtan movement. And first times warned him not to chant Hare Krishna. And when he did not care for it, then he ordered that uh, their midanga should be broken. So the constables came and broke the midangas. And this information was given to Lord Chaitanya, and he ordered civil disobedience. He was the first man in the history of India who started the civil disobedience movement. It is not Gandhi who is the originator of civil disobedience. It was Chaitanya Mahāp. He said that defy the order of the uh, <coughs> Kāji. Kāji means magistrate. So this evening we shall go at the Kaji's house in hundreds of thousands with Midanga and Kirtan. So simply by his order, many hundreds of thousands young men, not young men, young old, all kinds of men gathered and uh, so the point is just how popular leader he was, even in his young age, when he was only twenty years old, how popular he was. <coughs> so uh, and because he was a learned Brahmin, people would send him many presentations. A Brahmin is not expected to work. That is dāna-pratigraha. 
pratigraha means accept offerings from others. Just like you offer so many things to me, money, clothing, food. So a sannyasi, a brahmin, can accept, not others. A grihastha cannot. They are a restriction. A brahmacari can, but he can accept on behalf of his spiritual master, not personally. These are the rules. So he was learned Brahmin, and people used to present him profusely. So he had no economics problem. Not that he renounced the world on account of poverty or some strain. He had no poverty. He was opulent. And Brahmin does not require any great amount of wealth just to pull on his family. So that much amount was more than that he was receiving. He was teacher also. Patan Patan Jajan Jajan, Brahmin's business is to teach and to become a very learned scholar and teach people how to worship Krishna and become devotee himself and accept charities from others and distribute it again. So he had all these opulences without any difficulty. <coughs> and his family life, mother, wife, Chanakya Pandit says, Mātājasya grihi nāsti bhājyācā priyavādini arannam tena kantabhvam jathārannam tathā griham <coughs> Janaka Pandit is giving too much stress on mother and wife in family life. So he says, if one's mother is dead and if his wife is not very apriyabhādini uh, and does not behave very well, <coughs> uh, ill behaving. So Chanakya Pandit advises him that Arannam Tenagantha, such person should immediately go to the forest uh, because in the Vedic understanding there is no divorce. See, if the wife is not very pleasing, so there is no question of divorcing. Chanakapandi does not advise the advice that he should divorce such wife. But he says, Arannam Tenagantam. He should give her family life and go to the forest. Divorce was completely unknown. Even uh, up to, say, five years ago. Now this Nehru government has enacted Divorce Act in Hindu law. But actually Hindu lawmaker, they have no such thing as divorce. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is one of the brilliant examples of opulence that he renounced his so happy family life, not disturbing life, and very at a very young age, when everyone is after enjoying family life. So is it not a great opulence? Very great opulence. 
young man having good mother, good wife, good home, good reputation, good following, good parentage, beauty, everything, but he renounced. That is the greatest opulence. He renounced everything for Krishna. That is the greatest opulence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Similarly, uh, if we can follow his footprints, not that we have to give up everything, but give up everything for Krishna. That is very nice. any other particular yeah Gaur Kishore Das Bhaktivinoda Thakur was his father and Gaur Krishna Das Mahaji was treating Muktivinath Thakur, although he was householder, and Gaur Krishna Das Mahaji was renounced order. Still, he used to offer great respect to Muktivinath Thakur, and Muktivinath Thakur saw him a pure devotee, therefore he recommended uh, his son, Vimala Prasad. His former name was Vimala Prasad. And he got this title, Siddhanta Saraswati, by writing one thesis on astronomy. Astrology, astrological calculation according to <coughs> solar system. <coughs> so he got this title, Siddhanta Saraswati. So the Siddhanta Saraswati, Saraswati title also accepted by uh, Sannyas. Saraswati Bharati Puri. Arana, Bon, Parvat. There are ten names of sannyas. According to Mayavadi school and according to Vaishnavi school, there are 108 names. So, the Sami, Goswami, they are also included within that 108 names. So he accepted Gaur Kishore Das Bhavaji Maharaj, his spiritual master. Yes. Did the line of succession go directly to Gaur Kishore Das Bhavaji or to Bhaktivinoda Thakur? No, because he was treating Bhaktivinoda Thakur as his uh, Sikha guru, uh, preceptor. Guru. So it is in the line. But is Bhaktivinoda Thakur directly uh, in succession from Lord Chaitanya? Yes. And Koki Shodash Babaji also? Yes. He was playing Vaishnava Brahma in his household life, rather in student life. And he was taking the part of Rukmini. Because he was a very beautiful young boy, 
for my lay and in our childhood also we saw uh, in drama uh, there was uh, no females taking part if there was a female part the man would be dressed just like a female uh, formally females are not allowed if one has to uh, find out a, a female for taking part in drama then he has to find out from other quarters not in respect to part now <laughs> very very respectable educated girls are taking in drama and cinema in india formally this was not possible and perhaps in the theatrical performances stage that was introduced by lord chaitanya drama <coughs> but and his dramatical performances were limited within the devotees he would not allow to take part in the performance who is not a devotee so if our devotees that uh, movie was very nice that's a good example now if we play train our devotees to present some dramatical uh, performances or movie i think it will be very successful because they will play from uh, transcendental sentiment not for trade purpose so that will come out very successful in our childhood we had the occasion of taking part in a drama chaitanya leela i took the part of adwait and our friends sadars somebody took the part of chaitanya nitananda so that drama was so successful it was unique in calcutta because we are not we are not professionals uh, i saw from the stage a huge gathering they are all crying <laughs> i was surprised why these people are crying is it it is great success because we are not professionals we are not devotees at that time but some of us were devotee by family tradition but not exactly what is actually meant by devotee but still because we are not professionals the drama was so successful even and there was no female now uh, sachi devi uh, sachi devi the 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 friend who take the took the part of sachi devi uh his uh, soul so as so big <laughs> the <So> just see <laughs> so there there is no question of a uh, beautiful woman taking part so still the drama is very successful similarly when chaitanya mahaprabhu uh staged all the devotees took part shivas thakur adwaita chaitanya mahaprabhu nitananda and mukunda and other all devotees
Yes. And it said that Narada Muni delivered the chant to the earth. How was it? Was it here before he came? Hmm. Narada Muni delivered the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra to the earth. Yes. That you cannot calculate. Narad Muni is one of the sons of Brahma. So he is present since the time of creation. And many great sages and saintly devotees are all devotees of Narad Muni. Prahlad Maharaj is disciple of Narad Muni. Dhruva Maharaj is the disciple of Narad Muni. Vyasadeva is disciple of Narad Muni. Valmiki is disciple of Narad Muni. <coughs> so Narad Muni was very expert in getting disciples. He had so many disciples, unlimited. Akur actually means God. So one who is godly, he is also addressed as Thakur. Yes? Actually, dreams are also called Thakur. Yes. So long you sleep, you waste your time. Even when we dream about God brothers and sisters? Eh? Eh? Even when we dream about God brothers and God sisters? No, that is not Maya. I mean to say, dreaming means, yes, sleeping means stopping your active life. So that is a waste of time. We should rather, <coughs> the mind is always active, and dreaming means. The mind is acting. So dreaming is not always bad. Dreaming is sometimes very good. But I mean sleeping is not very good. Damodar, what is the price of these films? Su- suppose if we take films, very long films, what will be the cost? Well, in eight millimeter, the, the size film that we saw last night, the other night, it's not very expensive. It costs a little more than a dollar a minute. Uh, per, you know. So if there was a, an hour and a half film, it might cost uh, $150. Not much. But to make a, a film of the quality that's seen in the theater, it's 
very expensive. Mm-hmm. An hour and a half film, it's not unusual, $100,000. Oh. <laughs> So I don't just get a finance here. We can give so many ideas of Krishna consciousness, and we have got our players. Ramananda mentioned that I should write to uh, some foundations yeah. and groups, and I'll do so. Uh, there are a couple I've thought of making films on Vedic scriptures that would be interested in. Hmm. Yes, if you can take up, I can direct you. Yes. English? Yes. <laughs> but it will be very expensive to arrange for the war field. Sena and Ruhayar Madhya. We require so many elephants, so many chariots. That panoramic uh, manifestation of war field is, will be very expensive. Where are the elephants? They don't find here elephants. Oh, you can, you can rent elephants. Huh? You can rent elephants. Uh, you can rent, but how many you can rent? Well, how many do we need? Oh. You know, that there, is, there was uh, eighteen Okoyani ok- Sena, eighteen uh, groups of Okoyani, one Okoyani, so many hundred thousands of soldiers, so many hundred thousands of chariots, so many hundred thousands of elephants, horses. That is one group. Such eighteen groups are present there. At least uh, to make a successful scene, we require at least fifty elephants to make a show. And chariots. Uh, then it will be something generic. Bhagavad Gita, I think, uh, has not been attempted by any cinema company for this reason. It is very difficult to make arrangement for the war scene. This is not modern war. That there are many modern war uh, films. You can present that. But it is a different kind of war. So if you want to present Bhagavad Gita as it is, then these things will be required. Are there elephants available in India, Swamiji? Yes. <clears throat> elephants, there are many in India. Elephants, camels, horses also. Still, there are many. Could we film on location on the battlefield? Oh, yes, the battlefield is still existing. Kurukhetra. Yes. It is about 100 or 100, about within 200 miles from Delhi. It is not far off. (coughs) 
that my tape recorder is not replaced. Is it very costly now? I think so, yeah. About five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars, that may be Japanese. The original is English. Oh, English, I thought it was German. Yes. German or English. That is eight hundred dollars. It was very nice, yes. I therefore used to keep daily in my compartment. I didn't allow to leave it here. <coughs> How you are feeling, Yadrani? All right? I think we shall chant little Hare Krishna and close this meeting. <coughs>